So what I've got here are the supplies that I'm going to use for this reduction technique using charcoal. I've got a pencil, I've got charcoal, I've got an eraser, and I've got a ruler. Right, the ruler is going to be to measure the frame so that my frame is the same ratio as my reference image, which happens to be three by four. So we are going to measure out a six by eight frame so that it's just big enough to fill my paper, but also it's the same ratio as my reference image. Now the reason for that is so that if we use or when we use the background shapes as reference points for measuring the objects and the layout of each object in the composition, things will be proportionally accurate rather than disproportionately accurate if the frame is not the same size. All right, so the first step we're gonna do now is we're gonna tone the paper using the charcoal. We're gonna lay in a nice middle tone here. And you can see that the frame that I had from the previous example uh, is still in there as an imprint. I'm gonna use a paper towel and I'm gonna smudge this so that it's nice and smooth. All right, so now the purpose of having laid in uh, a middle value in many ways um, with my charcoal, the purpose of laying that charcoal on there and then smudging it smooth is that we have now created the middle tones in our drawing, right? Now all we have to worry about is the highlights and the dark shadows, right? So that's one step that we don't have to worry about is achieving those middle tones. The next step now is to measure out my frame. So as I said, my reference image is six, is rather three by four. I want the same ratio, but I wanna fill in my paper. So I'm going to create a six by eight frame here. All right, so there's my frame. That's gonna be a point of reference. I'm gonna darken that a little bit. This piece of charcoal here. All right, now we have our frame set. I no longer need my ruler. I'm gonna set that aside here. And I no longer need my paper, my pencil rather. What I need are my eraser and my piece of charcoal and possibly a paper for smudging, uh, for smudging. All right, now the next step is I'm gonna use organizational lines as a way to lay in or start to make certain measurements of where my objects should sit in my composition. The first step that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda divide my frame into halves, horizontally and vertically. 
And that's going to help me to kind of gauge and navigate around the picture as I draw the objects within it. I'm going to use that as a point of reference. All right. Now, with that done, I'm going to start to lay in the objects. Now, the first one that I'm going to focus on and organize everything around is the bottle of wine in the back. Now, if I look at the bottle of wine in the back, I notice that it is just to the left of the halfway point. So if this is my halfway point, it is to the left and just below the top of the frame, somewhere around this point. Now, keep in mind that these are just little markers for measurement and they're not exact. Right, so we're always going to be adjusting as needed, right? So as we start to lay in the other objects and we add the basic shapes, we might need to make small adjustments, right? Next, I'm going to add the top of the glass of wine. Now, I noticed that the glass of wine is above, it's higher than the middle of the frame, right? Just above that. I'm going to add a marker somewhere around here, right? This is my halfway point just above that. And again, how far to the left it sits somewhere around here, right? How far to the left this sits somewhere around here. All right. Now the next one is going to be the following. I'm going to add the background line, the horizon line, you could say of this box. Right now, if I look, it's just below the middle line. So if this is the middle line, that, that box is some, that box line rather, somewhere right around here. I'm gonna make a light outline, right? And I want that because that's gonna help me measure the next object, which is going to be the baseball. So the baseball is just below this line right here. I'm looking at the space as a measuring tool. I'm gonna lay in the mark right there on the baseball, right? Again, looking at that space from that line to the baseball. And next, I'm going to look at the bottom here, and that is the pool ball, right? I'm gonna make a little mark from the frame to the pool ball. I'm looking at that space as a measuring tool. The pool ball somewhere around here, okay? With that, I'm going to add another line for the mug. So again, I'm comparing it. This is my wine glass here, the wine bottle. This is my wine glass here. My mug is just below the glass of wine, and it looks like it's around the middle line too, right? Somewhere around that middle line. So I'm going to leave a little marker right there, all right? I've got everything laid out pretty well. I'm going to start to lay in the roof of this box here. Notice that it's, it, it meets just below the top of the bottle of wine and runs across, right? And somewhere around here, it curves up to this corner here. Now I'm gonna draw that corner here. Again, I'm thinking about the space from the frame to that corner, right? That's why you want an accurate frame size. So from this space to the corner, somewhere around here and it comes to the diagonal left and it fades into the background right so i'm going to kind of leave it like that i'm going to leave it like that and we have everything that we need now to move on to our next step which is to use basic shapes to have accurate objects right so i'm going to build this these objects using basic shapes the first one i'm going to use and the first one i'm going to focus on is this glass of wine here I'm going to use a U shape for that. And notice that the bottom of the wine glass um, is not quite as low as this corner line right here, right? So just above that, using this semicircle as a basic shape, right? Now, from that point, I'm going to start to build my wine bottle. Now, notice that the wine bottle the middle of the wine bottle happens to be in alignment with the side of the glass of wine. So if this is the So I'm going to use a rectangle for the neck of this bottle, right? And again, it's a symmetrical object. So if this is the middle line here, I want 
equal spacing on either side. And notice that somewhere around this point right here, it breaks off and comes to a diagonal and is overlapped by the wine glass. Now, notice that if this is the middle of the wine glass, it overlaps just to the right of the middle of the wine glass, if that makes sense, right there. And again, if it's symmetrical, it has to be equal on both sides. So I'm going to lay that in and I'm going to bring this line down, right? So this would be almost like a square forming on the bottom. And that's about as far as I can see that going in. It starts to blend into the background. So I'm going to leave it there, right? I'm going to lay in now the stem of the wine glass in the middle of obviously the glass of wine. And then the shape of the baseball and the pool ball. If you notice, they're about the same size, right? They're about the same size, right? So before I get to that, I kind of want to lay in they're about the same size. So if this is my baseball here, and again, I'm comparing the ball size to the width and height of the glass of wine. So seems like I got to make it just a little bit smaller here, right? And again, my pool ball is about the same size. Notice that they're not touching. And the pool ball is, if this is the middle of my circle here, pool ball is just to the, you could say right close to that middle line and on the right hand side. And again, similar size. Now notice that it's a little off from my original mark, but that's okay. It seems to be around where it should be, right? Always making small adjustments. Now notice the bottom of this mug happens to be, you could say just above the bottom of the baseball. So if this is the bottom of the baseball, the bottom of the mug is just above that, somewhere around here. Okay. And what do I know about this? Ba this mug, the mug is a cylinder, right? So I'm going to draw in the cylinder. Even though I cannot see the whole cylinder, I'm going to use a basic shape again, just to lay out the objects accurately. And notice that it doesn't quite touch the glass of wine. So this would be around where the corner is. I'm going to look at that space between the wine glass and the mug as a measuring tool. It doesn't quite touch the baseball either, right? So I'm going to create this shape from that point, those two points of reference, not quite touching the wine glass or the baseball, starting to lay in that cylinder that is the mug, right? Notice we can't really see the corner of the mug very well, but it is to the left of this corner here. Look at that measure, that measurement, right? Look at that space as a measuring tool. This around here. I'm going to bring this side of the mug down here and I've laid out my basic shapes, right? I'm pretty happy with that. I'm again, I'm going to look at all of the objects and compare them to each other and make sure that they feel pretty close to my reference image. Again, this is just the rough draft first. The next step now is to get the shapes of your shadows and start to lay in your values from that point. So our next step is to draw the shapes of our shadows. I'm going to get my charcoal here. I'm going to first start with the cast shadow coming from the bottle of wine here on the right hand side. Notice that it's similar in shape to the bottle of wine because it is its own shadow. Right? And now what I'm looking at to determine where I should place that shadow is the shape between the shadow and the bottle itself. Right, So I'm going to use that as a measuring tool. And again, I'm going to draw that shadow in that similar shape, almost following this line right here, which is what that line is the shadow of. Now notice that because the light is coming from the left, that shadow is a bit wider. And notice that the edge on the right hand side is softer. And I'll show you how to address that. But again, I'm following this curve right here downwards on this side. And notice on 
this area right over here, this glass of wine is casting a shadow right here. So that's what this shape is over here. Notice that it casts across the side panel of the box here, right? And then the cast shadow of the mug cuts across right around here. So that's what's going on there. All right, let's also get the cast shadows of the pool ball. And again, that too will follow the shape of the pool ball, which is a sphere, but when it is stretched out, you know, because the light is at an angle, it turns more oval-like. Right, we're gonna draw them in lightly. Now let's notice the cast shadow coming from the bottom of the baseball, right? It cuts behind the pool bottle, the pool ball, right? So the pool ball is overlapping it and into this mug right here. Now notice something that's happening in the mug. If you look at the bottom left of the mug here, it has this interesting shape. That shape right here is actually the reflection of the ball next to it, but because it is being reflected on a cylindrical object, it kind of warps the shape itself. So we are seeing the backside of this baseball. So you'll see that that's what this is. So I'm gonna kind of draw almost like a U shape with a shaded bottom here. And that cast shadow that was coming from the bottom of the baseball is actually going to connect diagonally to that U shape we just drew, right? And you have this shape of shadow here. I'm not going to fill it. I'll fill that in so I don't forget what that is there. Boom. Right? Notice that this pool ball is actually reflected right next to that baseball on this mug as well. And again, I'm going to look at where that position is. It's just higher than the baseball and how far apart is it I'm asking myself. I also see a little bit of that reflection of the cast shadow and I'm gonna draw that in right there. So it almost looks like a small, almost like a rectangle or an L shape, right? Notice that the inside of this mug is dark. So I'm gonna draw the shape of that, the inside of that mug just like this. I'm going to leave this edge. You're going to see that I'm going to outline the edge right here because that edge is, a, is highlighted. It's defined by a highlight. And I'm going to leave this little sliver going downwards. And I'm going to fill in this shadow here inside the mug. Again, leaving the edge that's been highlighted and leaving that little sliver that ran vertically down right there on the right hand side. All right. Now let's get the handle of the mug. Notice again, the handle is also defined by a highlight. So I'm going to draw almost an outline of that shape and then I'm going to re-outline it within because I want to leave that as a highlight. So I'll be shading inside and outside to leave that as a highlight. All right. Finally, the last shadow shape we need to draw is the cast shadow from the mug. And you'll see that it kind of comes up and across here and then kind of wraps around to the right hand side over here. You can see that right there. All right, now that I have the shadow shapes laid in, I can start to fill in my shadows. Now, if I squint my eyes, and this is the next part, the next step in our drawing is adding our values. We are going to be adding our darkest darks. Our middle tones are already taken care of by this technique that we started off with, toning the paper. And we are going to erase our lights. So a great technique for simplifying what you see and really just seeing how the lights and darks are distributed in your drawing is to squint your eyes. So squint your eyes and you'll notice that the lightest light is actually your glass of wine here second to that and just a little bit darker very slightly is the are the two um, cylinders which is the baseball and the pool ball and then finally there are some highlights in the left side of the reflection in the mug right here but again the main the main and the the, the lightest part of your composition is going to be that that uh, glass of wine there so Let's add in our shadows.
fill in the shadow shapes. Notice that the darkest darks are your bottle of wine and all that's happening on the right hand side here. So I'm going to fill that in. I'm going to men I'm going to show you like I mentioned before how I create a softer edge here cuz notice that this right side is darker and this is not such a harsh edge. It transitions into that middle dark area here. So let's fill this in and we'll do that. Again, remember that the handle of the mug is a highlight. So we're going to shade inside that outline and outside that outline, leaving that highlighted handle. Now this is pretty rough and that's okay because we're using charcoal so we can actually smudge this shadow shape or these darker values nice and smooth. And finally, I'm going to now show you how to soften that edge by pushing the value, pushing the charcoal out and into this corner right here. And notice that the right side here is also dark. I'm going to kind of push it in a diagonal. I'm looking at how that value, that dark shadow is being distributed and it's up in an angle on this right side here of the corner. And I'm pretty happy with that. Right? Notice that the right side of the mug is also in shadow. So I'm going to bring some of that shadow from this pocket right here into there by kind of smudging it in. Right? I'm going to fill in this shadow very lightly. This is more of a medium dark. Boom. And then I'm going to smudge that in there. I'm not, I didn't lay in too much shadow, too much charcoal. Right, and I'm also going to smoothen out this cast shadow that's on, that's coming from the baseball. Finally, this little pocket here between the stem of the bottle of wine and the mug is in shadow. Right, so we've got our darkest darks laid in there. Our middle grounds are taken care of because of the tone of the paper. Let's erase back our highlights, and that'll be the first step before we do our final step, which is adding our details. So the first thing is our lightest light, which is this glass of wine. Now I'm going to do my best when I do erase these shapes to kind of erase as much of that outline as possible without losing the form of the object because there are no highlights. There's just a difference in value, right? The background is darker than the actual object and therefore it makes it pop, right? Notice that the right side of the wine glass is in shadow. It has a shadow. So I'm going to leave that right side just like that and erase that little lip. You can see, you can see a little bit of the inside of the glass of wine there. I'm reforming the shape with a little smudging and I'm happy with that. Now let's define the stem. Same idea. We are erasing it. And now finally, the baseball and the pool ball are the second lightest thing. So I'm going to erase it, but not quite as light as my glass of wine, right? Now notice, we want to keep in mind the shape of the highlight and the shape of the shadow, right? Again, this is a, a sphere, this object, so the light and the shadow wrap around the object in the circular in this circular shape, almost like a C shape, is this highlight right here, or a half moon in many ways, right? So pay attention to the shape of the highlight. Notice that the right side is in shadow, so you're leaving that right side untouched. Now, notice in the actual mug here, you have a reflection, and on the top part right here, right above this reflection of this baseball right above that you have a bit of a highlight so i'm erasing into that area right there as you can see and on the right side of that between the baseball in the reflection that is and the pool ball you have a bit of a highlight i'm going to erase it to right around here 
right, right below that pull ball reflection. I'm gonna blend it in to the what's already there, that mid shadow, all right? With that, I'm going to also now look and notice that not quite as light as the baseball, but slightly lighter than the rest of the background, you have the light coming from the left. And so this corner is gonna be a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna kind of slightly, like about a half tone, I'm gonna to erase, I'm gonna remove about a half tone. And be careful around the ball, you don't wanna lose the form of the ball. But about that corner right there is what I'm focusing on removing. And then I'm gonna blend back into what's already there. So I'm happy with that. Now I'm gonna blend, actually, you know what? Just a little bit more right there. Right up to about right here. I'm gonna blend that back into the middle tone. So it's a nice transition. Now notice that on the right side here, we're gonna erase just a little bit here. On the right side here of the ball, you also have a bit of a highlight and right underneath that mug as well. So I'm going to erase just enough just enough right around to the right side of that mug and then I'm going to let, let that go and if I need to I can kind of blend that into what already exists there. And uh, finally on the top left corner here I also have a bit of that highlight so I'm gonna erase this corner here a little bit and kind of try to blend that into the shadow about midway and across, right? And then blend that on the bottom there back into it, right? I'm gonna do, this is about fine for a half tone here. And I'm looking at my values to see if I need to fix anything. That's step one of this drawing. Next will be the details.